So another important rule for calculating derivatives is the product rule. Okay. Let's say you had a function f of x equals g of x times h of x, and you want to know what the derivative of this function is. Okay. So unlike the sum rule, the product is not just going to be the product of the derivatives. It's going to be uh, something different. It's going to be the product of the derivative of g times h plus the derivative of h times g. Okay. It's the derivative of one times the other plus the derivative of the other one times the unchanged. So an example of that, let's say we have the function f of x equals x minus 1 times, let's say, x plus 1, right? which we can factor this out, and this gives us x squared minus x plus x minus 1, gives us x squared plus 1, which we know how to take the derivative of that using the power rule and then the sum rule. Right? Well, let's compute it using the product rule using product rule, okay, this would be our g of x is x plus 1, our h of x is x plus 1, so g prime, derivative of this function would be 1, okay, that's just the slope of that line, right, or the power rule, bring the 1 down, this becomes a 1, uh, 1 becomes 0, right, and the same thing here, right, h prime of x would also be in this case. Okay, so then using the product rule, f prime of x is equal to g prime of x h plus h prime of x times g. Okay, so then plugging in what we have here, we would get 1 times x plus 1 plus 1 times x minus 1. Okay, so that gives us x plus 1 plus x, or 2x plus 0. If we did that using, right, by factoring and using power and sum rules, right, if we factor this out, f of x, x minus 1 times plus 1, which gives us x squared minus 1, right? I can check that this is the same thing. Power rule says this becomes 2x. Power goes down by 1, so it's 2x, and then plus 0. They are indeed the same. Okay? And so you might be asking, where does this product rule come from? I mean, it's magic. So let's show where this comes from, right? And so this is going to be have a long proof. Um, so if you want to just do more applications of the rule, then skip to the next. Where does this rule come from? Right, let's say we had a rectangle. So we had a rectangle with width w of t and height h of t. Right? The area of this rectangle is the width times the height. The area is a natural product function of these two separate functions, which maybe are growing at different rates. Okay? Let's say at time, you know, a of t plus delta t. Okay? Let's say this grows a little bit in the width, a little bit in the height. So now, box a little bit bigger. Okay? So now this new width here is w of t plus delta t, right, this new height, new total height here, is h at t delta t, okay? So then these little slivers have height delta h and height delta w, okay? The new area would be, you know, h of t plus delta t, w, h of t plus delta t. And where's the rate of change of that area? Well, average rate of change between these two points would be a of t plus delta t minus a of t, right? This is 
difference between these two um, areas, right? Divided by force our delta t. Okay, so this would be the average change of this area over these two times, right? But if you look at what is the difference between these two areas, well, it's the difference of this area here, right? This sliver here, this sliver here in red, and this sliver here in green. Okay? Those three uh, areas are the new area, right? Between times t and t plus delta t, right? That's the amount that it grew. So I can rewrite the top as, you know, the blue blue area plus red area plus the green area. All that divided by that. Right, and so what is the blue area? Well, the area is height delta H, but the width is W, right? From here to here. So in blue, we have W of T times delta H. In red, this thing has width delta W, right? The change in width between WT and WT plus delta T, and height H of T, right? That's the original height. Okay, so in red, we have times delta W, and then this green area has width delta W and height delta W. This will be W, okay, all that over delta T, right? And then we can split this up into our three different areas, right? So this is W of T times delta H over delta T plus H of T times delta W over delta T plus, let's say, delta W times delta H, right? All I'm doing is rearranging this expression. Okay, so then if we want to find the derivative, okay, so this is the average rate of change of A, A between E and T plus delta T, equal to width at time T times this change in height over changing time, plus H at time T times the change in W over changing time, plus delta W, right, the change in width times the change in height over changing time. So if we take our limit, we'll get the instantaneous rate of change, or the derivative. If we take the limit, we'll get a prime at time t is the limit as delta t zero of this a, a of t plus delta t minus a over delta t. Right? And we just showed that that's equal to this whole block here. That's limit delta t zero. And I'll, let me go underline them red, blue, red is green. Right, so then here we have blue. We have this W times delta H over delta T plus in red H of T delta W over delta T. And then in green we have our third delta W times. Okay, and then we can use limit rules to split these up. This becomes the limit as delta T zero of W of delta H over delta T plus limit delta T goes to zero H of T delta W over delta T plus limit as delta T zero of delta W times delta H over delta T. And then, if you notice, W of T doesn't depend on delta T, right? This is just W at time T, whereas delta H and delta T obviously depend on, right? So remember that delta H is H at time T plus delta T. So this does depend. So we have to leave that in the limit, but we can pull the W out, and same thing here. We can pull this H out, and we'll leave that one in. Okay? This gives us W times the limit as delta t zero of delta h over delta t. 
plus h of t times the limit of delta t zero of delta w over delta t. And then this one you can write as a product of t. Okay, so let's write that as limit t get zero of delta w times limit delta t zero of delta h. Okay, and note that these limits of delta h over delta t is the limit of delta w over delta t. Those are derivatives of h and w respectively. Right, so this gives us w of t times h prime of t, h of t times w prime of t, and then here we have an h prime of t. Right, and then what's the limit? As right, so this is delta w equals w of t times w of t. Right, so the limit of this as delta t goes to zero, because we're not dividing by zero, if we plug in delta t equals zero, we can plug in delta t equals zero, right? So then limit as delta w as delta t zero, limit of delta w is, we can just plug it straight in, so that gives us w of t zero, which gives us, okay, this is all, you know, just notes. Don't have to do with uh, these aren't part of this equation, but I'm using this kind of notes to to find the uh, the the limits of this thing. All right, so then this one becomes zero times h of t. I guess this I'm gonna get rid. Of it. This is all green, and then that's zero times h prime. Okay, so then we're left with the product rule. Right, a prime of t equals uh, h prime of t times w of t plus w prime of t h of t, right? So this is the product rule, okay? And so that's just kind of a proof of where it comes from, okay? And then I'll do some other videos where we'll just go through some 